To create our painted paper loom, we could use one of two tools. First is a regular kitchen sponge cut into fingers. This will create great texture on your paint. The second would be a stubby brush. That's a chunky, square cut, round brush with strong bristles. The first example is going to use spring colors. For this, I've used the yellows, greens, and blues. Dribble the colors across your A3 cartridge paper. Remember, this needs to be painting paper that's stronger than regular thin paper and won't cool. Dab the paint across the surface using your kitchen sponge to achieve that textured look. The second example is aiming to achieve an autumn feel. For this we're using our reds and browns with a little bit of yellow and still some green in there. Once again dribble it across your page but this time stamp the paint across the page using the stubby brush. Now leave these paintings to dry before making your loom. To create the loom, fold the paper over with the painted side inside. The two short edges need to be touching here. Lay your ruler across the open end and draw a line the width of the ruler itself. The ruler width is a great tool for getting the right spacing between your lines. Turn the loom sideways and again using the width of the ruler for your spacing, draw lines from your first pencil line across the page to the folded edge. Continue until you have filled this side of the page with lines. Cut along these lines starting at the folded edge and stopping exactly on your pencil border. When you open the paper you can see the loom that you have created. you will be weaving strips of paper in between each of these cut strips. First I'm going to demonstrate weaving the autumn background painting. Select out cut strips of any width that you have as long as they are of a similar colouring as your background. I always have plenty of coloured strips in the art studio but you may use ribbon or magazine strips or colored card or wrapping paper. The list is endless. It's a great way to use up some of those beautiful papers you have lying around the house. The other option is to paint a second painting the same as you did for the loom and cut that all the way through into strips for weaving. One important thing to remember about weaving is that every strip goes through alternate to the one before. The aim is to create a checkerboard pattern. It's always easier to start weaving a strip near the center of the loom when it's really loose, but then push each strip up to the top as you go in order to create a lovely, tight, strong mat. As you get near the end, it will get a little bit tighter and a little bit trickier to pull those last few strips through the loom. And now let's take a look at the spring coloured mat. Similarly, collect some coloured strips to weave through this loom that match the colour of the paint that you've used. Again, you're aiming to achieve that checkerboard pattern. Look carefully at the strip you wove beforehand and make sure that the second strip is alternating with the first. Where the first strip went over, the second strip goes under and so on. This mat is also using cool colors in lilacs 
and greens and blues all toning in with that cool colored background when moving on to making your flowers you have options with sizes I'm going to demonstrate an A3 size option as well as an A4 size option for you. You might like to make both and put more than one flower onto your woven mat. The first step is to fold the paper on the diagonal. Make sure you match the sides perfectly and press down on the fold. This results in a small rectangular piece left over. Use the folded paper across the top as a guide for your pencil to draw a line where you can cut the piece off. This will result in a square shaped paper to work on. Fold your paper again across the other diagonal. This will give you an X or multiplication sign fold in your square. Open it up again and this time fold on the right angles resulting in a plus fold in your paper. First the one way then open up and do it the other way again. These folds will become guides for drawing our petals. Find yourself a round stencil that will become the center of your flower. The stencil will give us a perfect circle in the center. Now draw four petals, lining up with the diagonal fold. Draw the center line of the petal, then make two equally spaced marks on either side of it on the center circle. These will guide your next two lines on your petal. Slightly curve these away from the center line, but joining up at the tip of the petal. Do the same on the other side of your petal too. These lines get more curved the closer they get to the petal's edge and more straighter the closer they are towards the center diagonal line. Complete with all the petals on your flower. Now we're going to draw the arc lines across each petal. Try and match the arc to the curve that the center circle makes. Make these curves at least one finger width apart or actually even a little bit more. The bigger these checkerboard patterns that you draw, the easier they are to colour in. Taking out your colouring in pencils, have a think about what colour you would like to use on your flower. I'm going to make this flower a warm colour so that it will pop on the cool spring background woven mat that we made earlier. I'm pulling out the warm colors from the yellow, orange and red families and then I'm going to make a color swatch. I'm testing my colors out and figuring out which ones are the lightest and working my way through to the darkest color in the set. Once I can see all the colors in my swatch or test pattern, I select three, the light, the medium, and the dark color that I will be using on my flower. I'm going to start with the lightest of the three colors, and on my first petal, I'm going to color in the closest boxes to the center, but only every second box, alternating with yellow and white here. Next, I go to my medium color, which here is orange, and I colour in those white spaces that I left between the yellow colours. Once my first row is complete, I put my attention on the second row, but I need to alternate the colours this time. Where it was yellow before, I now match an orange, leaving white gaps in between. I then fill in those white gaps with the yellow, and the yellow now is matching where there was orange on the previous row. Continue alternating this checkerboard pattern until you complete the petal. On completion, you can trace over the pencil lines with a marker. 
to tidy up on the colouring in and make those colours pop. Complete all of your flower petals in this way. To create a design of implied texture. Implied texture means that the texture looks like it could be there, so it looks like it could be woven, but it isn't really. This has been achieved through colour combinations and through curved lines. Now that our petals are finished, we can turn our attention to designing a centre for our flower. Be creative here. There are lots of different ways that you can add texture, design, interest, fun to the centre of your flower. I'm leaving mine white in the background and using the black marker to create my designs. This results in a really bold pattern. The centre of the flower becomes the focal point in this way. We can further develop our flower with layering. So in between these four, uh, four diagonal petals that we have designed and finished off, we can now add four back petals, underneath petals, sepals onto our flower. These are under petals because they are being colored in with the same color family. So here I have used that same orange, the medium color, and alternated it with the red, the darker of the, my three colors. This helps it look like it is behind the top petals and gives it depth by looking a little bit more shaded. If you want to make these into sepals, you would be using a green color family. Once you're finished with all that, Cut your flower out. Flower option two was made using an A4 sized paper. So this is a smaller option and I'm going to demonstrate using markers here. Just as with the colored pencils, you can again find a color family with the markers. I have found the light blue, dark blue and violet from here. I do have thinner and thicker markers. I find that the thinner markers are great for filling in small spaces but get really stripy or scribbly looking when using to color larger areas and for that I prefer to use the markers with the maxi or larger tip. Again make a little test uh, swatch so that you can see how the colors will work together before working starting on your work. Again, starting with the lightest of my colours, I alternate those across the petal in a checkerboard pattern with the medium colour here in this set. So I'm alternating the light and dark blue. When it comes to the back petals, keeping with the same theme, I will be using the darker blue and the violet, making the back petals look a little bit more shaded, being on the darker side of the colour family and it helps with the um, illusion of shadow and light. Once you have completed all of your colouring in, again trace over all of your pencil lines with the black permanent marker to help the colours pop here and create a design as the focal point for the centre of your flower.
and this final option demonstrates the use of liquid watercolors. Here I am doing the testing of the three colors I've chosen. They're all in the warm color family. We are going to use burgundy, red and orange. Again we paint the petals in that familiar checkerboard pattern using two of our colours on the top petals and the other two colours on the background petals. You may notice that when I'm using paint I prefer to outline the shape first to create borders within which to paint with my watercolour paint. This helps to keep the painting tidy and inside of those little shapes. It's also a good idea to start with the darker of the two colours first and it makes it a lot easier and quicker when painting in the second colour that is lighter. Complete your checkerboard patterns around the top petals to create that impression of, um, of woven fabric or woven material. Add in your rear petals, the, the ones that are lying underneath the front petals, as we have seen done earlier on in the video. And comp complete the painting here, also in a checkerboard pattern, with one of the colours from the top petal and the last colour remaining. Finish off your flower by designing an original creative centre using your marker. And finally finishing off this final option with the black marker outlining or tracing over all of your pencil lines and cutting your flower out. Once all of your flowers have been cut out, whether you created one flower in one medium or three flowers in three different mediums, it is time to think about how you're going to mount these flowers onto your weaving. A good idea is to have a think about the colour families and whether you chose colours that will tone in with the background or colours that will pop out from the background. Carefully think about which way you're going to position the flower. If you've only got one, maybe think about a balanced arrangement or an out of balance or asymmetrical composition. If you have more than one flower, how are you going to layer them? Which way around would be the most 
interesting or the most balanced way of composing your flowers onto your background. You can choose to trim the strips of your weaving or leave them um, sticking out to the sides as you would in a real woven fabric rug. It may also strengthen your weaving if you mount it on some paper or background card as well. Attach all of the elements of your artwork with strong liquid glue. It will take a little longer to dry than dry glue does, however it is far stronger. Make sure you have settled on the composition before you do attach everything with glue. This final bonus section of the tutorial will show you how to go about creating a weaving that has curves rather than straight lines in the loom. First thing you would want to do is to create a stencil. I'm using a piece of card here. As before, I am again working with the width of the ruler here. Within the width of that ruler space, I draw the waves freehand with the marker. And once done, I cut this out with a pair of scissors. Create your loom as before by folding your card in half with the short sides matching. Draw with your ruler the width across the top where the two edges, the short edges meet. Turn your loom around sideways and using your ruler again, mark out the width at the top edge. And to avoid cutting too close to the edge, Repeat again near the bottom and now move on to your stencil. Line up the center of the tallest part of your wave with the folded edge of your loom and trace the waves across the page stopping at the ruler mark. As you go down make sure you're making a little mark from your stencil that lines up with the ruler width. This gives you an idea of how far down to drag your stencil and sets up your spacing evenly. Just a small little trick to keep in mind. Keep going until the lowest part of your wave matches up your lowest mark that you traced earlier, the width of your ruler. Take your pair of scissors and carefully cut along these waves. And here is your loom now with the wave cuts in it. Find your strips that you are going to weave through. It will take a few strips before you notice the wavy pattern, but it can be really effective. Remember that when it comes to weaving, after you have done your first row of in, out, in, out, or your first strip, your second strip must be different to the first one. So where your strip went over in the loom, the second strip goes under, always the opposite, creating that checkerboard pattern yet again. As you can see here, we've done a few strips and the wave is starting to become really noticeable. Keep your weaving nice and tight at all times. In this case, the weaving has been made with two complementary colors so that it's really clear and easy to see. One final option you might like to consider is adding in a few leaves. We created these leaves to match the centers of our flowers using lots of interesting line designs and patterns. Again, keeping the leaves white but creating all those patterns with a black marker. I really hope you enjoy creating this artwork that explores the element of art called texture, both real texture and implied texture, all explored through the context of weaving. Music